Thanksgiving is known for more than just turkey and stuffing. Unfortunately, it is also the top day of the year for cooking fires. Consumer correspondent Susan Copen is here with some advice to keep you and your family safe. Good morning. Good morning, Harry. Cooking fires are the leading cause of home fires in the U.S., and you are three times more likely to have a kitchen fire on Thanksgiving than any other day of the year. So we're about to show you the do's and don'ts of handling a grease fire. In just minutes, an entire house can go up in flames, and most of those fires start right here, the kitchen. Cooking fires cause more than 460 fire deaths each year and more than $700 million in property damage. And all it takes is a few minutes of not paying attention to the stove and what's going on in the kitchen to have a cooking fire start. Grease fires that get out of control are one of the main culprits. To see firsthand just how out of control they get, we went to the State Farm Building Technology Research Lab outside of Chicago. State Farm researcher John Donovan is an expert in grease fires. With firefighters standing by, he helped us set a pan on fire to show us what not to do when it comes to a kitchen fire. I don't think most people are prepared to deal with a cooking fire in their home. You might think water is the best defense, but not when it comes to a grease fire. Just watch what happens when John throws a small cup of water on the pan. The flames double in size almost instantly. Well, the worst thing you can do with a grease fire is put water on it. And here's what happens when John tries to smother the fire with a wet towel. Again, the fire becomes more intense. There's the potential to not get it on all the way. You're still going to have a fire going. There's the potential to drag that pot off the stove. Even using a fire extinguisher that is water-based can have disastrous results. Just look. Flames shoot to the ceiling. What you need is a dry chemical fire extinguisher, specifically designed to deal with grease. Pull the trigger and empty the extinguisher under the fire. You can see here how it puts out the flames in a matter of seconds. Here's something else you can do. If the flames are small enough, carefully put a lid on the pan and turn off the heat. And once that lid is on, don't remove it. Watch what happens when John does just that. As long as that burner's on, it's going to continue to heat that oil, and eventually it's going to burn around whatever lid's on there. Very important to get it shut off. If a grease fire is left alone, even for a few minutes, your whole kitchen can go up in flames. We let this pan burn. Within 30 seconds, the flames had reached the vent. At one minute, the cabinets were on fire. Two minutes, the stove and cabinets were fully engulfed, and flames were at the ceiling. At three minutes, firefighters knocked the fire down. 10 or 15 minutes, you could have a fully engulfed kitchen. Happens very quickly. And you should never try to carry a burning pan out of the house. And if you happen to have an oven fire, the best thing to do is turn off the heat and keep that oven door closed. And obviously, don't leave your food that's cooking unattended and call 911 if you have a fire, Harry. Now, some people think, well, I'll, I'll just throw something on the fire. Water, of course, never, ever. But what about something like baking soda? Baking soda can put out a fire, but it's not recommended. Right. So firefighters, fire experts say don't try to do it because you have to be perfect. You have to put a lot on. Mm -hmm. So in an emergency, you need to move fast, and it's probably not the best idea. And the real, I mean, the real answer is they have some of this sort of stuff in right in your house or right, you know, in a, in a place that's very easily accessible in your kitchen. Right. Have a fire extinguisher nearby. Mm -hmm. We have a few examples here. This is Tundra. The first one is $25 yeah. for a two-pack. It's a very simple bottle. It almost looks like a hairspray bottle. Right. Very easy to use for anybody who's maybe a little unsure about mm -hmm. how to use mm -hmm. a, a normal right. fire extinguisher. Also, the middle one, it's white. It's made for the kitchen. Some people don't want that big red fire extinguisher in their kitchen. That one is white. So that's your designer it, fire extinguisher. It's your extinguisher. designer fire right. extinguisher. And then the third one mm -hmm. is your traditional fire extinguisher. And you should always make sure that the fire extinguisher you're picking has A, B, and C. It's good for all fires, including those grease fires. Way to go. Susan Copen, thank you very much.